Needle Park. If you think drugs are confined to the rougher sections of big cities, think again. If when you think of the degradation associated with drugs, you think of a cycle of poverty and ignorance, think again. All of the above can happen in some of the world's best neighborhoods, is happening in, of all places, Switzerland, and in, of all cities, Zurich. It is the largest and richest of Swiss cities. You will not find visible poverty here. You will practically, wherever you look, find a calm and rich orderliness. The streetcars are free of graffiti, and they run like clockwork. And the streets are free of litter. So neat and conservative is Zurich that even the sometimes humorless Swiss joke about it. But, sorry, no jokes about the gnomes of Zurich, those tight-fisted Swiss bankers. No jokes about chocolate truffles or cuckoo clocks. This story, in the heart of Zurich, has no jokes at all. I am standing in what has come to be known as Needle Park. The city has given it over to cocaine and heroin addicts. It is there for all to see, a proud city's shame. Next to the USA, Switzerland has the highest incidence of AIDS in the developed world. The city is trying to stop the spread of the disease among addicts sharing contaminated needles by isolating them here and giving them free new needles. A park lavatory has been converted for the purpose. For every used needle an addict turns in, he or she gets a free sterile one. About half of these young people are infected, all of them are slowly killing themselves. At the end of the day, the evidence is in. 7,000 dirty needles in this city of 250,000 upright people. Dr. Werner Fuchs runs the Needles in the Park campaign. We are not, or my task here is not uh, drug prevention uh, at first, but it is AIDS intervention. AIDS intervention meaning clean needles. Is clean needles is uh, consulting, is testing, and it's even if we have time enough uh, to draw people out of this drug scene. But it, it's a pretty hopeless task, isn't it? Of course, this is a little bit a hopeless task, what one has to do. We have no other chance. Drug dealing and drug use are illegal in Switzerland, but police in Zurich have been ordered to turn a blind eye in Needle Park in the city's attempt to isolate its problem. As a result, it has become a drug supermarket. Every hard and soft drug is available at stands set up by dealers. Being Zurich, one of the most expensive cities in the world, the price is higher than just about anywhere else in the world. The addicts deal or steal or live off their parents, or they pick up the price of a fix any way they can. I used to make prostitutes. You used to be a prostitute? Yeah. And, no, and you're still a prostitute? Yeah. No, no, I stopped. Yes. Myself, yeah. The prostitute is the reason why I did start taking drugs. Where do you get the money now to buy the cocaine? Uh, now, that's like this. Sometimes I, I get the feeling, oh, tonight I want to make a party for me. I want to make a coke party. And then I go work, prostitute, get the money. And then I buy the cocaine, I use it, and then finish. And then I stop two or three weeks. And then again, I don't take every day. So you don't prostitute, you're a casual prostitute and a casual coke user? Yes, just like that. Where do you get the money for it? This morning I got uh, half of the money from my dad, and the other half of the money I borrowed off of my little sister. <laughs> How that's much? that's How today, what, uh, but 70 francs I came down so here. That's about $60. Mm -hmm. Rene, a regular in the park, has been in and out of therapy most of his life. After each attempted cure, he comes straight back to the park. I was spending every day anywhere from 1,000 francs a day to 3,000 because I was taking cocaine like an idiot. Cocaine is a thing that's just it's very short. You shoot it. For five minutes you have a flash and then it's finished and you want more and uh, the heroin that i needed was costing about a thousand francs again so that was the minimum you anyway five or six or seven hundred dollars a day sure without uh, much where more. do you get without that kind of money you deal i mean i my way of getting it was just to deal i used to buy it and sell it and i know a lot of people here they would give me a load of stuff on commission i'd sell it and uh, there you go pop goes the weasel you got the money it's very easy
Have you been tested for AIDS? Yes. Do you have it? You have it. You're positive. You too? No. Yet, no. The last test I did uh, in May, and I'm still negative. But it could be that I'm now be positive also. But Remo is 28, Sylvie is 24. She has not only tested positive, she is beginning to suffer the first stages of the disease. For both of them, their main concern now is not AIDS, but getting the four or five hundred dollars a day they need to support their drug addiction. And just for heroin, and we like much cocaine. And when you make first two, three cocaine, you don't can make stop. You want more, you want more, and... Hey. Sometimes we... Are you happy with this life? No. No. What we are doing here is a desperate task. It's five minutes past 12 o'clock, uh, if you regard the, the whole framework of, of, of AIDS intervention. And what we are doing is a little bit of schizophrenic. Uh, it is a schizophrenic situation. We are doing this here, and 10 minutes away, from this place, we have the center of our banks, and everyone is knowing about things like uh, money washing, you see. Drug money washing, yes, of course. So they're getting rich over there, and they're dying over here. Uh, if you see it simple like it, you can say it, yes. It is almost that simple. Less than 10 minutes away is the Bahnhofstrasse, probably the richest commercial street in the world. Tucked discreetly behind the shops selling garish $50,000 watches are the Swiss banks, which, despite some new laws, ask few questions when it comes to handling clients' money. Beneath the pavement of the Bahnhofstrasse are vaults holding billions of dollars worth of laundered gold. I think Switzerland is a very sick country today. I'm sorry to say so, but I think it's a fact. Jean Ziegler is a member of the Swiss parliament. He has long been an advocate of changing the banking secrecy laws that he says protects drug dealing and money laundering. Our raw material is money, mostly stolen money, tax evasion money, drug money. You say mostly? Mostly, I think. Mostly, I think. And uh, because of the banking secrecy, of the very great efficiency of uh, Swiss bankers, and uh, there is a deep moral crisis in Switzerland. And I think young people, they are revolted against this, uh, this riches, this richness. Materialism. Uh, this materialism, this very, very um, passionate search for profit at any price, which is the characteristic of the Swiss banker. And they just drift away. But, but if you uh, uh, say to that same banker, Yes. Come here, I want to show you what's happening. Yes. What does he say? They are moral men, you know. Moral men? <laughs> they are very decent men in private, but they are completely cynical when it comes to business. When it comes to business. And I think if you show a dying kid or one of these drug kids to a banker, I think they would be alarmed. They would be alarmed. But then they would say, what can I do? Money has no color, has no uh, odor, smell. has no smell. I'm doing my business. That's a very hypocrite way of seeing the world, but a very efficient way, a very efficient way. The truth of it is that the park and its inhabitants are practically invisible to those good moral burghers who pass it each day. If they regard these young people as the scum of the earth, what does that make of the people who profit from them? Some may even be their own children. Marco comes from an upper-class family, a graduate psychologist a full-time junkie. Heroin is like a wetsuit. A diver uses a wetsuit to keep warm on the water. Yeah. And heroin is like a wetsuit. With heroin itself, you're happy. So you, you're not cold inside. So you're, you're telling me you're out. a happy man? No, I'm not telling you I'm a happy man, no. Because somebody who is using a substance which is controlling him from outside, can't be a happy man, no. The idea was to isolate the problem by letting it fester in the park. 
but it's become a kind of fairground with all the attractions fatal. Whenever I come back to Zurich, I don't know, I just, it's like a magnet, this place. It pulls me down again, you know. There's something inside that, I don't know, I think for the rest of one's life, it's always going to be saying, come on, come on, it's nice, especially if you face any kind of problem or if you, if you have a day where there's, I don't know, a day where you're bored or for any little, uh, un, anything that's not running smoothly or How old difficult are you? for me, I'm 20. 20? 20. How long have you been? Hmm? How long have you been on heroin? Since I was 16. There's some terrible irony at work here. Well, this place in the middle of this city, uh, probably the richest city in the world, maybe. Hmm? Irony, why? So wealthy, so conservative, so clean. But that's why, that's why it exists. Mm, because this way they like things to be organized, you know? It's a very typical Swiss reaction. Not facing the problem, not facing the problem, just put it away. Just create some sort of a ghetto, some sort of a ghetto, hoping that nobody will look at this ghetto and that somehow these kids will die quietly without protesting, without making too much trouble. There are no figures on how many of these addicts die from AIDS. Many just drift away. It is known that more than 250 died last year from addiction alone. And the rate of addiction is increasing. The population of the park is increasing. The number overdosing is increasing. The medical staff tries to help, and the addicts, many of them who've lost hope for themselves, try to help each other. It is quite touching, this drunken dance. One man trying to keep the other, who has overdosed, upright and moving, trying to stop him from succumbing. The fight is for life. Annette Holtz is a social worker volunteer. She has watched life and death in Needle Park for four years. She feels that death may be the best alternative. It's a relief for those people. It relieves us somehow because we know they won't get out of the drugs anyway. Those people that have better, died. Better or, dead. Be better dead and they got their peace. And I hope so they got their peace. Annette Hotz does not make that statement lightly. Her own 22-year-old son has been in the park for almost five years one of the living dead who lives from fix to fix, one of the players in the macabre drama that is played out each day in one of the world's financial capitals. The bankers in the Bahnhofstrasse are comfortably appalled by all this, not noticing perhaps the smell of some of their own money. But they do their bit, they see to it that the city keeps the place clean, so when the time comes for the victims to die, they will die in a neat and tidy place. Do you think you'll live to be 30 years old? No. Uh, maybe. <laughs>
Mélodie voulut revoir le ciel de Sunderland. Elle prit le 707, l'avion cargo de nuit. Mais le pilote te met 